do it. Now give it to the person. He told you to do it. God told me Elijah. He said, I want you to kill Jezebel prophets. She had 450 prophets. The prophet of Baal. Amen. And they brought, it says what? Elijah brought them down to the what? Brook. He said, take the prophets of Baal. I don't mind. Take the prophets of Baal. I don't mind. Take the prophets of Baal. Who he told me to take? He told his servants. You got to serve before you go forth. You got to serve first. You got to serve the leader first. Obedient to your leader. A good father. You can't be a good leader if you're not a good father. You can't follow right, you can't be a leader. How can you lead it? And you're not following right. He said, take them. He didn't have to get dirty. He had to get his hand wet. He didn't have to deal with the blood. He said, kill them. And she had 450 false prophets. This man of God is a prophet to the nation. He was speaking signs, wonders, and miracles. He healed, he raised the dead. He was faithful to his calling. But he got tired, he was suicidal, he was totally no pressure. Wanted to die. Wanted to give up. Get out of here and say, I always think I'm going to be. Well, it was to you, it was in the world too. Because you didn't get it because you were drunk. Amen. You were high. So you didn't feel the pain that day. Amen. So he slew the 450 prophets on Mount Calvary. In verse 1 Kings 19 and 1 says, After he killed Jezebel prophet, after you do what God tells you to do, after you be obedient, after you be obedient, after you be obedient, after you do what God tells you to do, what happened in 1 Kings 19 and 1? 1 Kings 19 and 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and whether how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Ahab, the husband, like Jezebel was in charge. Amen. Ahab was a king, but he married the wrong person. He married a son. Oh, we go on this morning. A man of God, he's a prophet, but he married a sinner woman. He married a witch. Jezebel. No look them on you. Make sure you didn't marry a witch or a woman. Make sure you didn't marry the devil that went to go to church. You gotta say, I come as a packet deal. Jesus coming with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And the same Jezebel. Ahab, the husband, told Jezebel all that Elijah had what? Ahab, she slew all the prophets with the what? So now that was a bloody thing. That was a blood sensitive in the spirit. Sticking with a sword, blood flashing everywhere. But he said he sent his servant to kill the prophets. I don't even got brothers in the what? I don't know the servant wanted to kill them. Amen. Amen. Now he did what God told him to do. Being obedient. They do what God called him to do. The whole world will come against you. You could do sign words and miracles. They call you a witch of Wallah because you did sign words and miracles. Which is why anyone got power, but God got power. Which is why power came from God. I'm different with that. They sold out and worked for the devil with it. You could do this for God, you could do this for the devil. Verse 2 says, Verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. After he did what God told him to do, there was a hit out on his life. Well, why did the pastor got hit out on them? Why the preachers always have people trying to take them out? Because you're doing what God called you to do. Because you're on the devil's territory, you're snatching the people back from the devil so they can work for God. 
Amen. Amen. Now he did what God told him to do through the prophets. And now look, now I'll still get spirited out on his life. Tomorrow you're gonna die, boy. Come on, talk to me. The prophet, the man of God, the man walked the seven months of river without a seven-day screen on his life. She said, You're gonna die tomorrow. Because you killed my 450 false prophets. If you go all the way in the back, I ain't got time to go through the whole Bible. If you go in the back, she killed some of the Lord prophets. The Obadiah began to hide some of the prophets and feed them. You go back, and that time to go back today, but you go all the way back, she killed some of our men, so now you reap what you sow. Now your all yours are going to get taken, the yeah. 450 prophets. Now he did what God told him to do and got a hit out on his life. You did what God told you to get people around, and they didn't to you did what God told you to do, and you blessed them, you helped them. Now they are, now, now they are turned on you. You did what God told you to be nice to people, and then they cross, they didn't let you cross out. You be nice to people, that you told them, you blessed them, you help them, and now they are turned on you. You don't give me somebody, and then they won't pay you back. You know what God tells you to do? Sometimes it causes a hurt, and sometimes it causes a pain. But He said, I'll be with you all the way to the end. He didn't say you're going to have no pains. He said, in this world, you shall have tribulation. He said, you suffer with me, you'll reign with me. He said, you'll be persecuted for my name's sake. You got to pass all these tests of persecution. You're ready to fight back. You're ready to curse back. You're ready to go out back. He said, turn the cheap. You ain't turn nothing. You got your hand out of there. You're going out for me. Ready to fight. Meet me on the outside. I ain't going to get my room. You don't know me. No. You ain't turned nothing. But you want to preach. You want to go forth. <laughs> you ready to go forth then when you're already living a holy lifestyle. You can't preach if you're not living. Which a lot of people do anyway. I'm just saying the Bible. I need to come out to bring you out. Yes. I got to come out of bondage. Yes. Amen. So you, God, waiting on you to sit yourself aside, live holy, so He can do a work He's gonna do in you, so He can do your assignment. You ain't waiting on God. He waiting on you to get your act together. He went on you to get your life together. He went on you to choose this day who you're going to serve God or the day. He went on you on this day or you're going to be holy for me. See, you're going in ministry, it's, 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 a, it's a holiness. When you can't touch nobody until marriage. Where we going? Amen. You can't do what everybody else do because you're still aside. Amen. 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 He did what God told him, but now he has to send that spirit out of his life. She said, tomorrow, boy, you're going to die. And see, the devil will threaten you. But you got to know who your God is. You got to say, my God shall protect me. You got to say, no weapons fall against me. You got to use your word, use your power. Taste! You see that the Lord is good. Verse 3 says. Verse 3. And when he saw that, he arose. And went for his life, and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. So now he ran for his life. Because the hit out is on him. He left who? Got to leave Virginia. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> he left the servant. You know why? Because the side, they don't want the servant. People put down stuff for, for the top. They ain't for you. You can walk in and flip it in the neck for you. <laughs> you scared to touch it, and your name is not on it. You, you scared to touch it, so you know you ain't ready. You did what was in the wall. I'm walking in every day, but they can't touch me. I'm watching blood suck and fight, animals and fight, but they can't touch me. Because no weapons falling against me will not prosper. You gotta come out in fear and pain attack and be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Yes. 
He ran for his life because the assignment was on him. He left the servant. They don't want the servant. They want the person with the power. They want the person with the anointing, with the fire, the power. With the power, I'm going to attack the power. I want to attack the power. I want to attack that power. I want to attack the power. I want to attack the anointing. I want to attack the person being crap with the power. Crap. Full of the Holy Ghost, full of fire, full, full of the Holy Ghost, full of the fire, full of the power, full of the power of the Holy Ghost, full. I don't read it. The Bible says, I ride and eat, I'm going to read and eat. And I'm already on my rise. Come on, talk to me this morning. You ran for his life. So now he did what God told him to live what happened. Now a second experience all his life. I'm trying to show the Bible. Second experience that he started with the closest day of the people. It started in the Bible. They tried to take Jesus out every day, but he always got away. They kept killing him because he couldn't go nowhere until his time was up. That's right. You ain't going nowhere until God get ready to take you home. Amen. Amen. And might try. You can be the same stuff to you, but you ain't going nowhere. And this one's ain't going nowhere. Nowhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a waste of time. Yes. The devil sometimes yes. waste his time. Because yes. we're not going to bow. No. The Bible says he ran for his work. No. Ran for his life. And times something happened in our life. We get it. we got all get excited. We get mad. We get mad at God. We get mad at people. Then they think, they think, they think, you know, God don't work it out. Yes. He worked it out. And you go out there and get mad, all frustrated, and panic attack, and nothing. And God already got it worked out. Because why are you trying to figure it out? He already got it worked out. We got it worked out. Time is winding up. Time is holding. Go away, sin. Put God before sin. Sacrifice. Presenting them by a living sacrifice, holy, and they suffer to the Lord. And they've been running games, they've been playing games, but it's time to put the game down. Amen. Get serious about God. Amen. Live the lifestyle. Amen. You can do it. He's like, put no more you can bear. Verse 4 says, Verse Kings 19 and 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he impressed it for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. He's a prophet, but he's suicide. He do signs and miracles, but he's suicide. He raised the dead, but he's suicide. Running, you just slew, killed 450 false prophets. Now you run from one thing. That don't make sense. He could just told the service slew him. Slam it like he did the rest of them. He ran for his life. And after he read by his life, what did he say? I'm the well. I can't hear you. He sit on the juniper tree, and what did he request? He wanted to die. Don't be looking at Elijah because you've been there. You've been there. Don't, don't even look at Elijah. Don't even be told why he's doing it. He's a man of God. He's a prophet. Don't even look at it like that because you already been in that place of giving up and tormenting. Now you're ready to sit on the juniper tree. I'm sitting on the juniper tree. Now he said he wants. He's sitting on the juniper tree. I will kill all these people for God. Pray for all these people for God. Live holy for God. Stood for God. Been obedient to God when you had to cry. But now 
He's sitting on the juniper tree. He said, I can't take it no more. I can't, I'm sitting on the tree. I, I, I can't take it no more. It's, it's too stressful. It's too frustrating. Every, every time you're trying to find peace, every time you get peace, then something comes up and take away the peace. Yeah. One minute you got peace, one minute you're crying. I'm on the juniper tree. I got peace, but I'm crying. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can just unbold or give it up. When, God, why all this stuff happened to me like this? Why I got to stay here? Why I got to try this? Come on, why I got to live like this? Why I got to, come on, somebody, why I got to, oh, she won't lay out, yell at our seat. He said, I can't take it no more. You go through some of the tents and trial. You're in a place where you can't take it no more. You hurt. You build up on the inside. I don't mean to say the wrong thing. I didn't mean to come out that way, but I'm dealing with building root right now. I really, come on somebody. You know how stuff come out the wrong yeah, way? Yeah. You didn't even say it like that, but you're getting with Billa, and you're getting with hurt. You had to go back and repent. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, I got this going on, but I'm happy, I'm happy here, but I'm unhappy over here. Yeah. I'm happy in this place, but I'm unhappy right now. Oh. Amen. I got a peace in, but I'm tormenting him. I'm suicide in him. Want to give up on the third time, but all these spirits are taking your mind. Then you think something wrong with your giving up spirit. He said, God, you take me. I just want to die. I can't take it no more. I did everything you told me to do. Now I got to hit out of my life. Now I got to sign that. You ever been on a place where you blessed the whole family and the whole family turned on you? Yeah. Amen. You don't bother on everything. They still turned on you. Yeah. You gave your mind. They still turned on you. You ever been there for people that turned on you, disrespect oh, you for no reason? Yeah. You under that gentleman tree, God? I don't know what's going on, but I'm tormented. I'm, I'm resident. I don't know why I'm going through all this, but it's a pain. Situation. It's a hurt. It's a rejection. You ever feel rejected? Yeah. You ever feel in pain? You ever feel in suffering? You ever been a play? I just want to give up. I can't take it no more. Every time you fix something, something else happens. You fix this, something else happens. You fix this, something else happens. Something going on in the bed. Something going on with the song. Something going on with the dollar. Something going on with the job. Something going on with the hell. Something going on with your mind. Something keep going on everywhere I go. Trouble is on every side. You go to work, you got trouble there. You go home, you got trouble there. You got in church, you got trouble there. Every you get with your friends, you got trouble there. Everywhere you go, there trouble on every side. And you get in a place of giving up. Oh, I can't believe he talked to me like that. I can't believe my son said that. I can't believe my daughter said that. I can't believe they did like this on their job. I can't believe they want to fire me. I'm the good worker. Come on, talk to me. I can't believe they're giving a promotion against somebody else that's less than me. Where we going this morning? Where we going? And you're tired. I can't believe these people on my job. These three ladies, these three witches, these three people always trying to get me fired. Always trying to write me up. Always trying to tell my name. Always trying to lie on me. I'm on the Jewish tree. I'm, I'm tired. Yes, Lord. I'm getting tired. Some of them tired. I'm tired. You can, I can feel these lies on that job. He did what God told him to do. Now his life is just stated. He did what God told him to do. Now he got a second day spirit on his life. The Bible says he lied to be faithful. He loved God. He did everything God told him to do. Now, God, why did you let Jezebel threaten me? He said, well, God, why you didn't talk to me like this? Touch not your Lord and do the prophet no harm. No, no, no. They're going to touch you. They're going to take your name down. They don't care about no prophet. They don't care about no anointing. People are tearing people's names down. They are mocking the preachers. They are mocking the saints. They are coming against them right now. They take a pause out and making a joke out of it. They're making a joke out of God's word now. So he hung the gym and he said, I can't take it no more. I can't take it no more. He said, God, take me home. And everybody been on a place like you just get tired. Because you already going to fix some stuff and that's some more stuff don't happen. You just got to fix this stuff. I'm legitimate. You get tired of believing. Tired of being sick. Tired of can't breathe. Tired of your heart. Tired of your mind. Tired of people messing with you. Tired of people turning on you. Tired of people. Come on, somebody. Sometimes I can't give up. I got to hold on. Sometimes I got to hold on. I'm on the gym tree right now, but I'm not going to give up. He told God to take it alive, but we should live in that die. Look at somebody said, gonna make it. Somebody said, I'm gonna make it. Somebody said, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Somebody said, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Come on, we love the praise and tell thank you. It is, you see, it is, it is, it is, but enough now. Enough. 
You know what I'm saying? God, I love this enough. Every day is something. When I'm coming out, they're going to break down. When I'm coming out, they're going to peace. When I'm coming out, you get a smile. You smile one day, and they think you're crying. And they think you're tormented. And they think you're suicide. And they think you want to give up. They think you want to throw the towel in. They think you want God. They think you want to walk by faith and not by sight. So many tension. So many trials. So many pain. So many hurt. So many rejection. So many persecuted. For no reason. Here. Persecuted. Persecuted. For no reason. No reason. You trying to fix your family? They don't want to listen. So I'm trying to fix my family. I'm trying to fix the dog. I'm trying to fix the son. Trying to fix the grandchild. But they won't listen. They won't listen. They don't turn up against you. They put pressure on you. Pressure. Sit there. 
Get yourself together. Even under the general tree, he didn't get himself together. I'm suicide. Enough is enough. Just take my life. He's suicidal. He's a prophet, but he's suicidal. A man of God, but he was suicidal. He tired. Everybody picking on him. Come on, every man, man. Too many attacks. Too many assignments. God, you want a break? Yes. Yes. He said, God, what am I going to break? Yes, God. Come on, you can't matter what test somebody else come on. It came out, something else came up. It always something. It could be your healing. Something going on with your hair. Something going on with your mind. Something going on with the body. Something going on with the children. Something going on with the grandchildren. It always something. Or you could be in a place you need money and your bills ain't paid. You could be in a place you laid off your job. You went on to work a job. You could be in a place you work but you're making, not making enough money. It always something. You say, God, oh, when I'm coming out. You guys just say, God, oh, enough is enough. Didn't you tell him that? Amen. He said, enough is enough. He said, just take me out. I can't do it no more. He said, I can't do it no more. Everybody in a place. Pain, suffering, and hurt. Look at somebody say, get in the city. Get in the city. Get in the city. Because you really know. The Bible said, but he himself went on a day what? Journey into the what? Wilderness. He's a man of God, a prophet, but he's in the wilderness. In the wilderness. He's in the wilderness. He's on a journey of pain to suffering and suicide and want to take his life. Yeah. He told Mother, take it. Like he ain't taking no more. Oh life ain't nothing to play with. You got to be prayed up. You got to die. You got to pray. You got to get the word and learn how to stand this wild of the devil. Why do you think some people suicide? They're giving up. Yes, Don't let them need the word on the inside of them. Yes, they just about to pray up through. A word from God. Yeah. Don't suicide. Don't backslide. Don't throw the time in. Yeah. He says, God, he requests for God himself that he might what? Die. Mm -hmm. He was suicidal. Mm -hmm. I don't care what kind of, I don't care what title you got. You have. You're going to go through a pain. You're going to go through a suffering. You're going to go through a hurt. Yeah. Amen. You're going to go through some stuff that's going to hurt you on the inside. You're going to go through some stuff when I can't believe it. All this stuff happened to me. Amen. You can eat good, dress good, look good, but then you still unhappy. Everything ain't done. Everything ain't done yet. There's some stuff you're unhappy about. There's some stuff you want to do. Some stuff you want to conquer. Some things you want to go. Some things you want to do. Some money that you need and it make you unhappy. I'm in an unhappy zone. Unhappy zone. Arrive and eat. Arrive and eat. Verse 5 says, We go by my own through. First Kings chapter 19, verse 5. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. God, now this for God God didn't even pray for him. Come on, talk to him now. He didn't even, he didn't even encourage him. Come on, talk to me, somebody. God is the oh, you could be all right, Elijah. You should live and not die. Be encouraged. I got your back. God, and that's how God do. I think I'm like that, too. You can be pains and suffer. I said, I don't do what I told you to do. You shall do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you work on it. <laughs> Yeah, Candy go call me. I told her there's something about she ain't to hear good, loud, and she got to come to the door like I told you. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? God did not encourage Elijah. Everybody want to oh, oh, encourage your work. We can't continue to give you, baby. We can't continue you to give you a pamphlet and pacify. You want to hear Come on, you, you got to come out there and pacify. You got to come out that wheelchair, come out the pathways and pass it by 70 plus <laughs> No one go through no pain until suddenly when you stick a pass by anymore. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. <laughs> Ain't got a bad relationship. Amen. We have to give you meat. I don't know what pass by I don't have that meat. Amen. And what it says here, it says that uh, verse five says, now he laid. Uh, what is it? And as he 
laid and slept on the well. He slept well. In the king sat down. It will soon. Come to say, white sheets. Slept on a tree, a man of God. And people think it's because a man or woman of God going through something happening. That don't mean nothing, just a sign that they got to go through something to get the power that they're going to need. They can walk around. Go up on the cross, turn across the line. Grow up, you got to learn how to praise me with nothing. And we come on, somebody. Anybody can praise God. You got all the houses and cars and money and jobs. But can you praise me on nothing? Can you praise me? You ain't got the bank account. Can you praise me when you're checked down? Can you praise me when you're staying with somebody? Can you praise me when you've been a ride with somebody? Can you praise me when you're in a bed with some cold pants down? Can you praise me? Can you praise me on nothing? Nothing! Can you praise me on nothing? Yes, God. Anybody showing all over the church the houses and cars and money? But can you praise God? When you don't have anything. Do you praise God when they told you no for the house? They told you no for the car. A lot of people get no for their house, but even you get the house. You get no for the car, but even you'll get the car. And amen. You're going to get some no, but you got to keep going. You got to know the word is not over. You got to keep going until the door open. Go up to God. Some people open doors on this morning. Open doors. Open doors. It said he laid the man, the prophet. What is the man? You see a man laying in the street now on the tree. He said he'll prop down the week now. You'd you, you be surprised. All the people down there on the bridge and stuff. Those people can sing, can preach. Sing better than us. Preach better than us. They, they gifted, but they, it's hidden because it's under the, they under the bridge. The, the, the people laying out there in the streets. You, they can be the best singer, the best preacher, the best teacher. All they need is some boots. All they need is some help. All they need is some help. And when Jesus had 12 disciples, no one had no green degrees. <laughs> he had 12 disciples, now one half degree. 12 disciples, they were unlearned. 12 disciples, come on, they were unlearned. God had to teach them. God got to teach you. God used dysfunctional people. Don't look at your life and say, oh, I did this. How do we all know sin? Like a cut on the glory. Everybody just get different sin. We ain't no better than nobody else. We all, come on, we all have sin there. We all have did some bad things or wrong things. We all have bad, 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 bad mistakes. Ain't nobody better than nobody else. Can't nobody look down on nobody because all of us don't sin it. All of us don't sin it, so you can't look down on nobody. Some of you still sin. So <laughs> that in there. We all have sinned it, so you can't look down at your God. You dysfunctional people. Thomas was a doctor. Yeah, Thomas was a doctor. Come on, give us the praise, Amen. And Peter was a what? Fisherman. Just a fisherman. He was a what? Fisherman. Amen. And Thomas didn't have faith. He didn't have faith. Now let's go with the um, welcome to the zone. They're going to read me verse 5. Now he had 12 disciples. Yeah, Thomas was a doctor. But he didn't ever use his position. In the Bible. You know, never operate on nobody. Nobody never go to him for help. Everybody went to Jesus, but he was a doctor. Amen. Let's go to verse 5. Okay, all of my arise and what? Arise and what? Amen. Mary, Magdalene, and Martha. It was unlearned. Lazarus was unlearned. Amen. And they got with God, he began to uh, teach them the wills of God. This one is from verse 6. Now, this, now, the Bible said that he laid on the jungle tree, beholding an angel. Someone said, an angel touched him. And said unto him, Arise and what? So, God will feed you. I bet you eat every day. Now, you go, you can't say you ain't eating anything. He will feed you. 
Verse 6 says, Verse 6. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. So he ate and he drank. Now, you see, he did kill himself. You see, God didn't take him home when he requested it. And the reason why they take him out to home because he had more work to do. He had more assignments to do. Amen? He didn't take him home. God fed him. Verse 7 says, Verse 7, And the angel of the Lord came the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat. Because the journey is too great for thee. Now God says tomorrow, to God has said today, arise and eat. Because you're on a journey. So somebody said I'm on a journey. Amen. Now you got to arise. And so God said, arise and wait. Eat for where you got to go. For the assignment God got to you. God got some work for you to do. God got some assignment for you to do. God got some door giving open for you. So God said, arise and eat. If he said it's time to get up, you've been laid back too long. You've been kicking it too long. You've been uncomfortable too long. But God said it's time for you to get up, to rise and eat. Verse 8 says, verse 8, And he arose and did eat and drink, and went into the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights into Horeb, the mount of God. So God allowed him to eat for forty days and forty nights with that meat. But God gave him what? Strength. Now, God didn't take Elijah home. Elijah didn't kill us even though he was suicidal. What God did, he strengthened him. And I hear God saying, I'm strengthening you today for your tears. I'm strengthening you for what you're going through. I'm strengthening you to everything you've been through, everything you've hurt, everything you've been rejected, everything you've been left, everything you've been abandoned for. God is saying, I'm strengthening you on today. I'm, I'm giving you the strength to go forward. Look at what they go forward. And then verse 8 says, verse 8, verse 8, and he arose and did eat and drink, and he went into the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. So now he didn't, he did not suicide on him. So every day and then you'll be on your dream tree and get like suicide and torment and give it up, but then you let it come to your right mind. When you give it to your right mind, when the Lord can float, when the Holy Spirit get on you, you commit to your right mind. They care about your assignment. They finish your course. They do what God called you to do. A lot of stuff gonna come your way. Truck on every side. Stuff gonna try to distract you to do what God told you to do. But you gotta come to your right mind and get back in position. He got back in position, right? He got back in what position? Verse nine says. Verse nine. And he came thither unto a cave and large there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What dost thou hear, Elijah? So now he in a cave now. And God said, Now what are you doing in a cave? What are you doing in your own out of mass and you ain't going to church no more? What are you doing in your own out of mass? And say, I'm just going to sit down. Come on, talk to me. Come talk to you this morning. Amen. Amen. You were sitting, well, now you're in a cave. You say, I just can't do it, I can't take it on you. Amen. Yeah. You're in a cave with, 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 with giving up a torment and you're tired. And God said, What are you doing in this cave? I don't never take you going to the cave. Every day that you're going to the cave, you'll be to yourself. You don't want to talk about it, you want to ask for it, you want to tag, you don't want to go favor it. You want to sit there and just be to yourself and have your pity party. Come on, talk to me. Amen. What are you doing in this cave? God said, I ain't told you to go in the cave. The Bible said he lounged in the cave. He rested in the cave. And um, this is the verse. What verse we just read? Verse 9. Verse 10. Verse 10. And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. Now he's talking about Jezebel, she threw down the prophets and the altar and stuff, and tore it down. And he said that he's the only one living right. Come on, talk to him. Look at this, you're not the only one. 
Uh, we're not the only one that can prophesy. You're not the only one that can sing. You're not the only one that can preach. You're not the only one that can serve. You're not the only one. Lord God, billions of people can take your place. You got people in the world that can sing. You are all with him. What they get in the church, they get the anointing. Amen. But it's, you see, he says what? He said, I'm the only one left that they seek my life to take it. So now he said, he's the only one left that's going to be killed. But he'll understand he's not going to be killed. You know, he, God not going to let Jezebel kill him. God going to kill Jezebel. Or oh, we'll be going this morning. God going to kill your Jezebel. You, come on. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's go to verse 11. I'm sorry. Let's go to verse 15. Oh, Y'all read verse 10. Okay, go to verse 15. Verse 15. You might stay up and remember. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. When thou cometh, anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. Now he's suicidal. And God tell him to go anoint somebody. Come on, talk to me. Suicide, go tell you go preach. Suicide, go tell you go sing. Amen. Ain't got no car, no driving, no nothing. But God said, go. Now this man, suicide, go tell him, give him a position. I'm giving you a sign of what to do. God did not feed into his suicide. Where we going this morning? You know how often you go cry, do all this stuff, then you, you, that chest ain't moved. It's still there. Amen. Come on, talk to me. Now, after he's suicide, God said, I don't, I'm not dealing with your suicide. Go and anoint his him. Go and anoint. I want, you, I want to give you an assignment. I want you to do your work that I call you to do. Even though you're suicide, even though you're tormented, even though you're oppressed, even though you're living lack and poverty, even though you're going through, even though you can't get divorced, even though you're going hurt, go do your assignment. He, come on, talk to me. Because when you're sold out, you got to keep going. You got, to, you got to preach in the pain. You got to sing in the pain. You got to serve in the pain. You can't give up. You got to keep going. Yeah. You just want to keep going. Keep going. Now, this man tried to suicide. God said, go knock somebody. He didn't give him no bad name. He said, oh, y'all, you don't suicide. I got your bad. I'm going to kill you. He didn't even know he's going to kill Jezebel. He didn't even know. God going to tell you everything. He wants you to believe. Verse 15, he in the grave. He said, go now. After he's suicide, he said, go on no hands of the king. Oh, see, right? He told him to do a sign man while he's suicidal. Why are you crying? You do crying, go preach. Why are you crying? You do crying, you go sing. Why are you crying? You do crying, you go to church. You got let off your job, go to church. You lost your house, go to church. You came out the boat, go to church. Go! Go when bad stuff happens. Go when trouble on every side. Go and put God first. And God's going to bring you out. He's going to give you the strength to deal with your boys. He's going to give you the strength to deal with that bad relationship. He's going to give you the strength to deal with your finance. He's going to give you the strength to deal with your health. He told him assignment to do. Verse 16 says. Verse 16. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Shaphat, of Abel and Nehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet. Now, now, look how many people you want him to anoint while he's suicidal. You believe in what he's saying. You believe in what still go to church. You heard him still put God first. You just came out of bed, but still put God first. You might not have no mind to put God first. Things that go around in your life, put God first. Put Him first and watch God and work it out for you. Then go to verse 17. We're going to close out with verse 17. Verse 17. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Haziel shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah slay. Elijah anointed. Jehu. Jehu was a man on a certain instrument. He had Elijah, he had Jezebel throughout the woman. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Amen. They come find up on the scales and they took them a limp. Jehu, God said, Elijah, you suicidal, you crying, 
Some go get somebody in your position. Where we going this morning? I'm going to get somebody in your sadness because you're crying, you're suicidal, you can't do it. Let somebody else do it, not suicidal. I'm going to use J.U. to kill Elijah, not you. J.U. had a thought out the window. Y'all know the word in my heart. J.U. Elijah, Jesse had a thought out the window. And she died. Go ahead and kill. J.U. was assassinated in spirit. I'm a sublimated spirit in the spirit realm. I bruise certain hair. I bind witches. I bind water. I come to put out strongholds. I come to break yoke. I come to raise the dead. I come to heal the sick. I come to go to Derry territory to take God's stuff back. I've been assigned to take God's stuff back. I've been assigned to release the blessing. I've been assigned to release the healing. I come to take back her. But the enemy has stolen from you. I come to take it back. I'm on the devil territory. I'm gonna take back everything that they have stolen, everything I'm taken. You gotta be a sacred spirit in the spirit realm. Stop being a whim. Stop being crying. Come on, you got to fight the good fight of favor. God was a warrior that he gonna depend on them on the devil territory and take all his spawn back. Take your life back. Take your job back. Take your identity back. I'm raising the warrior, said the Lord that God. Fight the good fight of faith, said God. Fight the good fight of faith, the rest of the world is in the last day. You want to make it? Don't take, don't worry, don't be on your heels. Don't waste your time. 